Unlock your inner artist and let your imagination run wild as we guide you step by step on creating custom paint jobs that will leave your friends and fellow enthusiasts in awe. You'll have the bragging rights of owning a one of a kind custom train that will stand out on any layout. All aboard, it's time for custom paint on the Big Crab Cake Channel. Hi Crab Cakes, I'm Emil Hinault and this is the Big Crab Cake Channel, the channel dedicated to model cars, trains, and villages as one amazing hobby. Show your support for us by subscribing to our channel, it really makes a difference. We started our custom model train project with a trip to Star Hobby near Annapolis, Maryland. It's our local hobby shop and they stock lots of new and secondhand trains. We were looking for secondhand freight cars. We found these three at a very low price. There are two Atlas three bay cylindrical hoppers and one 50 foot PS1 boxcar. These freight cars are O gauge scale size, which means they're larger than the O gauge traditional size cars. The larger size gives us more room for custom paint and logos. We're going to paint them with one coat of white primer. In this case, we're going to use one coat of fine surface primer by Tamiya. And then we're going to give each car two coats of color, red, also by Tamiya, as well as yellow and green by Tamiya. Tamiya makes excellent paint for this project. For one, it comes in a spray can because we're not going to use a spray gun and nozzle and all the cleaning that's associated with it. It's just one small project and so we have small cans, but it sprays on very thin and fine. So as long as we don't overdo the paint on each coat, it'd be very easy not to have runs and drips or paint lines. It's going to give a very nice finish and then we'll add our own logos and decals. But the first thing we have to do is get these out of the box and prepare them for paint. Let's start off with the box car. Atlas makes excellent cars. These are actually used. And to be honest, because they're in excellent condition and we're gonna paint them, we really don't even want brand new. It's really hard to tell the difference that these aren't brand new. It's almost a shame that we're gonna use these as project cars. They're so beautiful, but the price was right. Now let's open up one of the hoppers. These cylindrical hoppers are also part of the Atlas Big O Rolling Stock series. The paint color on this car is really interesting. It's, it's almost like a, an iridescent purple that fades. It sort of looks like one of those new car paints that sort of changes color in the sun. I don't think this does, but it sort of has that look to it. Just the same, we're going to paint it. And our last hopper. You can see that these cars are really two of the same. At least they come from the same mold. They just have different paint jobs. What I like about all these is they have a nice big area for us to paint or apply uh, logos. The first thing we're going to do is remove these trucks. Set them aside. That way there's no risk of paint getting in. We don't want any paint getting in here and causing friction between the wheels and the axles. So rather than just mask them off, or with tape, we're just going to take them off completely and we'll put them back on after the, the car's had its custom paint. There's some sections like this bottom that's black that we probably will just tape off. These are nice. These have really heavy trucks with a lot of good weight to them. And the three of these together were less than the cost of any one of them brand new. The first thing we're going to do is set two of them aside and get out our foam cradle. I've seen this before, we've got a slot for putting a car and holding it firmly but safely. We don't want to crack these. We don't want to rush through this and uh, risk breaking something because they're still fragile. And then it's got a small slot for tools or something or screws. And then because the foam can be a little scratchy, although there really isn't a problem because we're not painting it, but it's just our habit of using a soft cloth, which is basically a, a car wash cloth. We get them at the dollar store for a dollar. This holds this nice and steady. But also keeps us from having to grip and squeeze so that if we end up working with it, we don't squeeze and break something like these fragile uh, ladder steps. Each truck is held in place with just one screw. Using the correct size screwdriver is very important because we don't want to strip these screws. They have a very exact length and dimensions that they might be hard to find. Here we go, take it off. These are nice heavy metal trucks.
With this car, rather than taping off the bottom, we're just going to take it out. It's held on with four screws. This one's ready for paint. And because we're going to paint all of this, including the bottom, this one's ready for paint. Black bottom of this looks nice. We may or may not mask that off. But this one, although it's the same kind of car as the gray one, is not ready for paint. The first two cars had uh, painted on logos and words. And with just a little bit of light uh, sanding with a very high grit sandpaper, they are ready to go for paint. This one actually has some separately applied decals. I guess these were transfer decals. And you just feel them to touch with your finger. If we don't do something to either remove these or sand them down, I think removing is the way we're going to want to go, then whatever kind of coats of paint we put on this, the design of this is going to show through. So we have to get this off. We'll do that with a little decal solvent, but we're going to do that outside where there's much more fresh air and ventilation. So now we're outside in the fresh air and ventilation, and it's safe to use what would otherwise be some harmful chemicals. I'm not sure which ones we're going to use. We're going to probably start off with some goof off and see if this works. I actually don't know. We're experimenting here. And if we have to, we'll go to acetone, which pretty much gets everything off, I think. So let's start off. This one, I think, is going to be fine. I don't feel any raised letters. I think the paint is very thin and raised into it. So all we're going to do with this is just rough it up a little bit with some 1500 grit sandpaper. It's a very fine sandpaper. You can't even really tell anything. All we're doing is taking a little bit of the shine off. We're going to go across the lines just in case there is a little bit of a ridge. And do the other side. So this one's ready for paint. And we're going to paint the whole thing so we don't have to tape anything off. This one we're going to paint the whole thing one color. But I'd like to take off this walkway at the top. And it's, it's loose on there right now. It's just held on the ends with what kind of looks like three-way staples. So I think we can just pull those up. Just take those staples off. Set them aside. I think they're meant to look like gar grab rails, but really like an L-shaped staple. Use a screwdriver to help pry it up. And we're careful with it. And that takes off the walkway. The little dust that was left behind from under it, let's clean that off with our soft cloth. And since this is going to be all one color, this one's ready to go. That leaves us with this one. Two problems. One, it's got raised stickers that we have to get off. And once we do, we're going to, at least the plan is right now, to keep this bottom black. So we're going to tape that off so that it doesn't get paint on it. So let's start off with some goof off. This is Pro Strength Remover. It's supposed to be good for tar and some other stuff that I can't read. But latex paint and adhesive and glue. Let's do that. Put it on with a brush. Now be careful not to inhale this. This is toxic. It should be okay out here. But in a confined space, too much of that would be a bad thing. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on the brush. I'm just going to paint that on our Atlas sticker. And I can see that's already starting to take it off. This is working. If I sound surprised, it's because I am. This was a guess. But honestly, it doesn't matter if they come completely off. We just want to get this smooth. And it was just too thick to just sand down. We want it smooth so that when we paint over it, the lumps of the letters and the logo don't show through. 
can still feel the raised letters to my fingertips. Whereas here it's smooth. Here I can feel it rough. So we're going to keep working on it. So there's a little bit of the edges is a little stubborn. So let's see if we can coax it off very carefully. It's a little window scraper, really just a blade. That seems to be working pretty well. Now we're going to smooth it out. Start off with a little 320 grit sanding block. Next, we'll go over this with some 600 grit sandpaper. And finally, some 1500 grit sandpaper. It's almost ready to paint, but before we tape it off, we're going to wash this off with a little soap and water just to make sure we got all the goof off off. Any goof off that's left behind is going to make our paint not want to adhere. Okay, so we're all clean. And this one, we're going to tape off the bottom. We have regular paint tape. What do you call it paint tape? I don't know. What do you call this? Painter's tape? Ed edging tape. Edging tape. So we're going to do a nice job, take our time. There's no point in being obsessive about it. I mean, it's just a toy train. It's not like it's the Mona Lisa or something. If we get spray, if we get the wrong paint on this black, we can always touch up the black with black paint. So there we go, it's taped off and ready for paint. Okay, so we have our um, fine surface primer by Temia. Take a good shake. You hear that little metal BB inside? You know, spin that around real good because this has been sitting in a hobby shop for God knows how long. And all the pigments settled to the bottom probably. So. And then around, make sure that BB scratches up that stuff and mix it up good. I think it would help if I elevated these just a little bit. So I'm going to step away, grab something, I'll be right back. Okay, so some scraps of trim wood that we used on temporary layouts. And just going to set that up a little bit. Same with this one. This. This one we're actually going to paint in two stages because we're painting around the whole thing. So I'm not going to paint the bottom and then have wet paint sticking on this. It's a really good way of suspending this in midair, so we'll just do it in two steps. Raise it up here so we can get under it a little bit. And this one's taped off on the bottom so we can leave it the way it is. Let's shake that a little bit more. And we're ready to go. The first spray is going to be out here. But in case there's any sediment built in there, try to breathe it in. <laughs> That's probably not good. Okay, wind's going this way, so let's be upstream. And when you start spraying, you don't want to be aiming at the car. You want to be aiming to the side when you press down and then move evenly across at a slow pace and stop on the other side unless you're going back and forth. But always begin and stop away from the car in case there's any spatter. And we're just going to give thin coats. If it doesn't cover in one, that's fine. We'll come back and do it later. If you start putting it on too thick, it's going to drip. And the drips are very difficult to sand out. You'd think it would be easy, but it's not. So it's way better use of your time, even if you have to do three or four coats of this, than to try to put it on thick and then spend hours and hours trying to sand out the drips. I think that's thick enough.
that's all for that. We'll probably need another coat, maybe even two coats. That's okay. This is the good part. It's easy. That's our first coat. It clearly doesn't completely cover it. We're gonna need at least another two coats, but we're gonna take our time, let this dry for a couple hours, come back to another one, let that dry for a couple hours, more coats. We'll keep doing it. We have a nice, smooth coat of white primer, which is specially designed to help the color adhere. By using, getting a really good primer base, even if it takes a long time, we're gonna end up using less time painting with the color. We'll probably only need one or two coats. We're back from painting and I think they look pretty good. The next step is going to be to add some uh, decals. Now, if these were intended to be made to look uh, super realistic, I would use the uh, water transfer decals. Sort of have clear edges, they're thin. You can apply chemicals to them, sort of make them almost melt into the design. But these are not intended for that. These are intended for sort of just fun. They're bright primary colors, and I want to use something more simple, basically a uniform uh, style sticker. And that's what we have here. We have some different ones, but they all have, uh, they come from the similar color palette with sort of a white outline. So there's going to be a uniformity, at least of, if not the design, then of the application. And I think that'll look good for sort of continuity of these three cars as being one train. But the first thing we need to do is get these back together. Let's get some wheels on these. So the first one we're going to get our wheels back on is our green car. And this was the only one where we taped off the bottom to protect the black paint that was on the underside. So let's remove that first. That worked out very well. There's a nice crisp line between the green and the black. So let's put it upside down in our cradle and we will add the trucks. They came off with one screw each and they'll go back on the same. Okay, that's almost ready to go on our layout. We just need some decals. We can line this up. Where I want it. These peel off just like any normal sticker. I think it looks pretty good. That's that side. And the other side. So they're different sides, 
So as it goes around the track, sometimes you'll see this side, sometimes you'll see this side. Next up is our red car. Okay, now that ready for decals. There's one side. And our other side. And finally, our yellow box car. This one, we actually took the whole bottom out and the trucks off. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what we did with them. I'll go look now. Okay, here they are. So, base is held in with four screws. It's actually a pretty heavy base. Now, these Atlas cars, they're really good quality. And that extra weight is going to make this boxcar ride really nice on the rails. It won't be bouncing around so much like some of the uh, lesser quality cars tend to do. Mm. Now that's ready to go. That's one side. And the other side. Now this actually also has a uh, walkway across the top that we took off. So that we could paint it. We're going to put that on now. Now this detail is very small, so I'm going to use my two times magnification glasses that I got for a dollar at the dollar store. Let's get this on the layout with the other cars and take them for a run. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time on the Big Crab Cake Channel.